Welcome to another episode of the Hospitality Mentor Podcast. Today, I'm excited. I've got Brian Tuba of Aligned Hospitality Management. He is the founder of the company. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Steve. I'm really excited to be here today. So before we jump into our questions, I like to do like a little 30 second download. What is Aligned Hospitality? What are you doing over there? Uh, we're a third party hospitality management company based out of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we've been in business now for about three years. Um, and yes, we're we're here for all your needs in the, the management sector of hospitality. I love it. I love that you're yep. building a hospitality management company, a hard business to get into. And I want to cover that as we get through your journey. Uh, but we always start with, what was your very first job in hospitality? It's funny you ask that because uh, I, I grew up in a hospitality family. So both my parents were general managers. Oh, wow. uh, so my first official job was being a hotel brat, right? Knowing all the uh, the ins and outs of the big boxes and knowing which, uh, you know, air ducts I could crawl through and, and, and see what's going on in all the, uh, the properties. But my, my first official paycheck uh, came as a houseman at a Doubletree property in Tucson, Arizona. So I uh, started in housekeeping. I always joke with everybody that I think my, uh, my parents were trying to keep me out of the industry. And to break you. Yeah, exactly. And see kind of what kind of work ethic I had. Um, and, you know, it, it, it drove the passion and the love for the industry even more so. So, yeah, my first job was, uh, was a houseman at the Double Tree. That's so cool. So your parents were doing this both as general managers? Yes, sir. When I came around, uh, my, my father had already gotten to the general manager ranks with Hilton. Uh, and my mother actually was, uh, was a housekeeper. Um, and so then she eventually, you know, she's, she's co-founder of Aligned Hospitality. So it is a family business. Oh, nice. Um, and she eventually worked her way up to be a general manager and then obviously got into some ownership as well. So cool. All right. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. So you're yes. there as a houseman, hardest job probably in the hotel, I would say, clearing those beds that mm -hmm. broke me mentally a couple of times. Exactly. Uh, with that. And so how did you decide? Was that saying, all right, my parents are both in hospitality. I'm going to go to college and learn about this. Or did you say, hey, no, nah, I want to go a different route. What did you end up doing when you went to school? Yeah, I had a pretty interesting route. So uh, I, I was heavily involved in sports. Um, so I, I started off in the, the, the housekeeping department and it was, it was because there was more flexibility. Uh, so I was able to go to practices and, you know, kind of tweak the schedule. And, you know, there, there was a little bit of nepotism. I, I worked for, at my mom's hotel. Uh, but I was able to be real flexible with it. And so my, my journey, uh, was a little bit different. I, I went on to play college ball at a small division two in New Mexico, uh, found out I wasn't going to make the NFL. So I decided I need to kind of figure out what, what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Uh, so then I transferred to NAU and I actually studied political science, Northern Arizona university. Uh, and I started studying political science and I always joke with everybody. And that was kind of the beginning of my sales career. <laughs> it's true. So, Yep. So, um, I, I worked front desk at a little holiday Inn express to get myself through the first two years of school, uh, again, due to my ties to, to the hospitality industry, you know, I, I decided to, I, I didn't finish school. I went back to work. Um, I had a, I had a great opportunity to become a, a what they call a sales reporting systems analyst, uh, back with the Starwood days and you would support the revenue team and the sales team, uh, for a small box. 102 room, four points by Sheraton in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, so I ended up leaving school and I, I, I started my career then. That's so cool. So I always think about this because my daughter, right? I'm in hotels. My son, they've, like we said, they've been around to some of the nicest hotels just from where I've been working. Right. Where, and I always wonder like, all right, if they got like that teenage years, I could help coach them in the interviews. Were your parents helping you when this time was coming around? Were you able to call up your dad and be like, hey, what do, what do you think about this? You know, it's a, it, it's kind of a funny story. So I came back and, and, uh, I was doing, you know, the work during the summers, I'd go back to the hotel and I was actually working at that same double tree that started my job. Uh, my mom had now progressed to be the general manager of the hotel and I'll never forget it. I was actually working, um, I was, I was splitting time between the reservations and front desk, you know, remember when reservations were back on property. Yeah. Uh, um, so. I was, I was splitting time between the two departments and I, and I'll never forget it. I had a director of HR came up to me and he said, Hey, do you love this industry? And I said, well, absolutely. I love this industry. This is all I know. It's what I've been in. And I mean, I get free, I get, I get cheap hotel rate. No. Uh, no. So anyways, he, he sat me down and he said, well, if you love this industry so much, you need to leave this hotel and you need to leave Hilton. 
And my first reaction was, what did I do wrong? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and he was just, and again, and, I, and I'm so thankful for him, Eduardo is his name. Uh, he had said, you know, if you want to really branch out and beat Brian, you have to get away from your, your parents. You have, and they were both with Hilton at the time. Uh, and he happened to introduce me to that Starwood world and the four points that I spoke about earlier. So that's kind of how I started to gear into that, into the wow. sector of uh, hospitality. That's pretty cool. Did your parents send him in undercover or was that just like, you know, out for you? my mom has never uh, admitted to that. I, you know, maybe one day she will. <laughs> I'm tired of dealing with Brian every day. No, uh, no, I, I think he was just, you know, in hospitality, there's such special people, right? And it's such a people industry. I, I truly believe he was one of those ones that just, you know, he saw somebody that was young, hungry, uh, and, and really wanted to guide me through the, the next steps of my career. And I just, yeah. you know, I'm so thankful for that to this day. Yeah, it's a great conversation because you said you could have just stayed there and, oh, that's, you know, that's the son of the GM and done your thing. But you started building your name and then you go. So you go into that Star Wars world. What was that like when you leave, uh, I'll say, leave the nest and you head on over on yourself? Um, it was different. I mean, you know, it was always kind of, and I hate to, you know, I got to admit it now. Uh, well, my mom's general manager, right? Or my dad is a general manager type of thing. Uh, so it was, it was one of the first times got pushed out of the nest, had to fly. Um, I, again, you know, God puts you on a path for a reason. And that story just starts to, to come together. And, you know, um, I just had, I'll never forget it, Sandy Osberg, Deborah Lottie, who now is our COO. Uh, those two they really just shaped the future of my career. And I would have never met these, uh, these amazing women uh, without being pushed out, right? Uh, so, you know, they pushed me out. I, I, I learned the ins and outs of the revenue management side, being the SRSA. Um, Sandy Osberg always thought I was kind of fun and, you know, lighthearted. And, and she told me, she said, the day you turn 21, you've got a job as a sales manager. And um, sure as heck, she was true to her word. The day I turned 21, I, I was a sales manager. Uh, and I always wanted to after watching it because I'm like, wait a minute. They travel, they eat, mm -hmm. they get bonuses. And, <laughs> and little did I know that every month they start at zero, right? And the stress that brings in. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so them pushing me out, it really started shaping the future, uh, you know, to where we are at today. But it was, it, it was a great journey. Yeah, I was always jealous of the salespeople coming through my operations. I was like, man, they just sit here in this restaurant. They give feedback that I don't require right now to make my day more stressful. Uh, yeah. And then they're not here on the weekends when they sell out the place. <laughs> so, but yeah. Steve, I will tell you, because I did come and I started in housekeeping, right? And, you know, it's funny on our, uh, on our corporate level, um, that is one of the requirements that I have or what that I'm looking for in the skill set is that uh, everybody either came through line level food and beverage or started in housekeeping. Because as you know, it's, it's the heartbeat of the, the properties. It's the heartbeat of the company. Uh, it really dictates the success uh, of everything we do. So, you know, I, I was glad I had that perspective. It made me a better seller, especially as I got started getting into the resort world. And I, I always had that perspective in the back of mind. That's so cool. I like hearing yeah. that, especially that means that everyone knows what's going on in your company. They understand that line level. And as you're growing, let's get back to your story here. So as you're growing, yeah. right, you are doing sales manager for a couple of years. Then you kind of make this interesting jump pretty early on. You become a director of sales at an aloft. What was that like for you to kind of be that director level so early on and young? Yes. Um, so it was a fancy tab title for business transient sales manager, right? And, yeah. I, and, and again, coming from the four point, believe it or not, was more of a group house. It was right by a university. Uh, I handled the sports market. So I, I had a great market. Man. You oh, thought you were locked in. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, you know, there was a, the, this aloft was being built from the ground up. A great, great ownership group. Uh, they're actually still around. And the, actually the general manager who hired me was longtime Starwood, uh, Jamie Metzger's his name. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people know him from Six Sigma. Great guy. Uh, but it was, I, I had never had the experience of opening a hotel from the ground. Uh, and this was in 2008. So the economy was what it was. Um, and I, I'll tell you, that was the first time I think in my career that I felt true dress, right? Like, you know, and, and I'll be honest, we opened the hotel and I think we maybe had three rooms occupied for the first two months, 60 days. I mean, it was, wow. Brutal. And 
I think but every day that that ownership group got it. Jamie got it. Uh, they were, I mean, they pressed, right? Like any, any ownership group would, but they, they believed in me. They really, uh, they guided me through it because again, I was new to a lot of this. I, I, yeah, I didn't know what the heck, a lot of the GDS, what is that? Um, uh, so I really learned on the fly and they gave me the opportunity to do so. And I will tell you, um, we, we, we ended up doing pretty well before I took off from there. And it was just purely, you know, one of those things where it, which you don't know, you don't know. And sometimes ignorance is bliss and you kind of fall into things on accident, I guess you would say. Um, and we ended up catching a couple of projects that made that hotel very successful. And, you know, it's still doing well to this. Well, it's cool because you make a move after that, but you were, had that title where you're like the buck stops with you. And then you transition back into like a, a luxury space, I think kind of for the first time in your career over at the Westin. Yeah. So, so you get back, but you still have learned. What was that like making that transition? It, you know, it was incredible because, you know, at those small box hotels, uh, you know, those select service type of hotels, right? I mean, Aloft is a great brand, cool brand, the, the baby sister of W. So it really was hip and trendy and it just kind of fit what I, my vibe that I liked. And, but when you're, when you're in that small of an operation, you know, you learn that, okay, you're going to work the front desk, which by the way, was the greatest lead generator ever. Uh, you're going to help at the bar. Sometimes you're going to be a server. Every event you book, you know, you're, you're setting it, you're doing it. So now you're the banquets team as well. Uh, so the, the experience was just, it was top notch. I mean, I learned every single department in that hotel. There was even some accounting that was involved with that. Um, so it was just, it, it was an inter it was interesting going from that full points for that full, uh, four points, full service type property to getting into that limited service. And it's, you know, you don't have a specific role. It's everybody does everything. And, and you know, and that's kind of what's, what Aligned is about now as well. I mean, we don't have our operations managers, our corporate director of ops, they, they go down and if we have to help clean rooms, I'm cleaning rooms, you know? So it's, it's really, it's funny how each step has just let, led us to where we're at today. No, it's amazing because every time I talk to somebody at the smaller boxes, they learned everything. They knew every role. So when they get into the bigger hotels and the bigger resorts, like, oh, I know how to do all these things and they understand what they're doing. So it helps you when you're selling, like, you know what you're selling right exactly. when you're doing that. All right. So you're there, you get to the Westin and you continue on your journey. And I kind of want to fast forward a little bit. Um, you move into the Fairmont in Scottsdale. So you're kind of hanging in Arizona for most of the time. Mm hmm what is it like when you get to Fairmont? Cause now you've seen all different kinds of hotels. What is it like once you get there? Man, I'll tell you. So just to rewind a little bit. So again, Starwood was incredible. La Paloma, I probably learned, I would say the foundation of everything that I kind of, you know, that has helped us get here, you know, again, back to Sandy Osberg, she became the director of sales and marketing there. She brought me in uh, and taught me everything I needed to know from a, a background, you know, I didn't know much about a star. I didn't know much about a P and L. I didn't know much about a lot of these things. Why we do rate management? Why we, you know, why are we capping space, the rooms, you know, those type of things, right? So I, I do want to give credit to the Starwood world. Really, just I mean, it was incredible. Uh, now I will say the thing about the Fairmont. I probably one of the top three to four leaders I've ever I've ever met and had a chance to to be around. Jack Miller, he's the general manager, still there today. Um, you talk about a true visionary, a gentleman who, you know, he just saw the vision when he first got to the hotel because it was, it was, it was in bad shape when he got there and the story's fantastic. Right. Um, uh, so that property, you know, every stop you learn something right. And that property really taught me the importance of vision and then following up on your vision and following up and, and, and no matter what comes your way, that vision has to be the vision. You may pivot on how you get there, but you know, he just, he was so inspiring and I'll, and I'll never forget it. That was the first point I started thinking about, you know, I may be more entrepreneur than I think, because I remember he would come into our, um, orientations and, you know, orientations, you should be getting people excited about working at the property and, you know, all these things. And, and he came in and his whole thing was do what you're passionate about, do what you love to do. If it's not, don't be here because it's a job and you need a job. If that's the case, Please just leave. Do yourself a favor, not us, but do yourself a favor. Go and no matter what it is, hunt out your passion and 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 stick to it. Right. He just he was so motivating. And I think that was the first time I was kind of thinking to myself, you know what? Like I I want to do my own thing. And at that point I was still a sales manager, not a director. Um, 
And that's when I started getting into that mindset of, you know what, I want to lead. I want to lead a team. I want to have a team. I want to have my own. I want to have my own vision, right? Um, so that, the Fairmont really set me up to start thinking kind of that big picture and that vision. And, and really, I, it was sitting in that orientation. It's amazing how something just clicks, right? And, yeah. and you know, that was back in, what, 2015? So, you, you know, you're looking at nine years ago. And it took, it took six, seven years to get there, but it was, it, that was the place that it was kind of where I started thinking, you know, like, I, I, I don't want to work for someone. I want, I want my vision to come out. I want, I want it to be what I'm looking at and working towards a vision. So anyway, so that was that, the Fairmont. It was amazing experience. I mean, they're just top notch. Everything they do, the brand as a whole, is, you, you know, probably a lot of your guests know. Um, it, it was just incredible. It was, it was oh, fantastic. I want to touch on what you said, because that's sometimes very pivotal. So I didn't realize that was going to be like the moment that triggered it for you. Yeah. Did you do anything then? Did you start like putting ideas together? Was there anything that started to kind of trigger you to do it? You know, so you, you'll, you'll keep, we'll keep going through the journey here a little bit. So um, Focus Hospitality, which is a few stops later, uh, my mother actually had started with this group. Um, that uh, ownership group that had kind of broken off of another investment group, started their own. They bought a few of their own hotels, brought my mom in to start running the hotels and kind of form this smaller management. So, you know, we started having those conversations of, you know, me potentially joining Focus Hospitality to, to work with her and being on that next level up. Uh, but, you know, credit to, credit to my mother and, you know, I think hugely why we're, we've been as successful as we've been so far. She's just, she's very um, analytical and very calculated on the moves made. And, you know, it's tough to hear it, but she, she's so, no way in hell you're ready for that, right? Like you're just not ready for this level. Keep going through you, do your progression, your growing. Um, so yeah, there were conversations, but it was more of one of those, it felt like a closed door, right? Like, wait, yeah. wait, you've got this great opportunity. You're not going to bring your son in. And, yeah. and no, you're not ready. You know, and just so credit to her. Uh, but yes, they, so nothing really, it was, it was the thought process. It was conversations, but it was just kind of dinner talk. Um, nothing, nothing too serious. Yeah. Cause I was always brainstorming, right? Like I'd have a little journal, I would write ideas and oh, that seems like it'd be a good one. And I would dabble, but I'd never made the full jump until later on. Yeah. Um, but you continue to move, right? So you continue to grow. So kind of give me that journey. Take me through until you get to focus. Walk me through what happens. Yeah. So I would say a. I finally got an opportunity um, to to lead my first big team. Uh, I was the director of sales and marketing at the Hilton El Conquistador in Tucson. Uh, Prism Hospitality, I'm sure you're familiar with yep. Prism out of Dallas, uh, now with Ingrid. But, um, you know, I, I had the opportunity. They Tucson is a very niche market. Uh, a lot of times, if you don't know Tucson, you're going to struggle in Tucson, especially in sales, because the market is just so unique and so seasonal, et cetera. Um, had a general manager, Guy Alexander, and he believed in me. Uh, they brought me on green. I, I, again, very green. I, I knew how to sell. I knew resorts. But I, I, was, I was pretty green to a lot of the leadership side of things. Um, and, and once again, that bigger financial picture, understanding that this is an asset versus just go get heads and bets. You know, there, there is a shift uh, that takes place. So he, he believed in me. Uh, brought me in. I will tell you that was the most fun I have ever had at any property level there in La Paloma. Just, I got surrounded. We built such an amazing team. I remember coming in, Steve, and looking at the GRC and going, wait, do we just not book anything here? I mean, it was just, it was, it's such a transition mode. Uh, new ownership had just come in, big renovation happening, and there was nothing on the books. And I remember going, Okay, this isn't the worst place to be, right? Like, no matter what yeah. I do, it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to yeah. be a step up. Um, so I remember coming in and, you know, I, I, going through Starwood, it was always the show, the dog and pony show, right? So every site visit had to be big. Everything had to be elaborate. And you just had to really, you know, I always compare it to Disney, right? We're going on stage, make it shine. And that was my one ask of Guy is that, you know, hey, no matter what we do, you're not going to get too mad at me about the budget. We'll do it as much as we can, but let me show up uh, and let our team. And we built this team in that was just incredible all the way up from, you know, um, conference, conference planning, the catering team, the sales team. We had a team of about 13 
in the sales department. And then obviously an amazing operations team that was built there. And we just took that and we literally, I mean, I can't even tell you how much the, the ownership appreciated the business we put on the books. And it was just, the team was incredible. They bought in, we had fun every day. I mean, there was music in the, in the office playing when people won, you know, it was just, we celebrated a lot. And, and it taught me, you know, those celebrations is what keeps driving people. Um, so anyway, so that, 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 oh, well, that's good next. So six years prior, you were director of sales, but we learned like it was a different type of director of sales. It was. So Absolutely. what was this like when you actually had a team that you had to lead? Cause this is really like the first time you had a team. Yeah. And, and again, I, it was, you know, it was funny cause you know, you, you go all the way back to playing in sports, right. And it was the first time that I could incorporate a lot of that team aspect of the, of sports and the motivation and the, you know, we all, you're strong as your weakest link. You know, it's all those, you know, it's all those sayings that sound cool, but until yep. you're living it, it, you don't realize how important they are. Right. And I think that was the first time I realized that, you know, you truly are as strong as your weakest link, no matter where, what, no matter what you're doing. Right. That, um, and it also taught me it taught me it's about the people, right? It's not about that bottom line. It's not about the dollar. If you treat the people right, you treat your team right, it's amazing how the results just organically start to follow. Um, so yeah, it was it was very different than the Aloft experience. And, 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 and again, it was just one of those steps that was incredible. I love it. So you continue on, right? So give yes. me that next step. Give me that next step. Now you're still in Tucson, but you, you're still, you grow. You grow into that hotel. What happens? Yeah, so this is actually a pretty good story. So a uh, funny story. So the same ownership group that owned the Hilton El Conquistador, uh, my mother's company had started. They said, you know, we're going to branch out with third-party management. So they had a couple of this ownership group's hotels that they were. So one day I am in a uh, staff meeting and I get a phone call. And, and you know, you, you're in a meeting, so you, you ignore it, right? Yes. And I get another call and it's from our VP of sales with Prism. So I ignore it again. Well, then the third time I'm like, okay, this is pretty serious. So I go and I answer the phone and they say, Hey, are you interviewing for another job? I said, no, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, my mom had been negotiating, taking on a few properties of this ownership group. They were using two different management companies. And one of her stipulations was, well, then I get to bring my son on board to help me over it. I had no idea at this point. So we still joke about this today. I'm like, you could have let me know. So I could, you know, um, so it was the, the easiest interview. Fired. Yeah. yeah, it was the easiest interview I've ever had. Um, but anyway, so yes. Yeah, so, you know, all that went through, uh, um, focus had brought me on. It had started off as a business development type of role. They wanted to expand focus. We were going to uh, start focusing, no pun intended, but more on uh, expansion and bringing on more hotels. Um, so they brought me in and that was in 2018. So again, six years ago, this is kind of fast. Uh, um, yeah. So we came, I, I came in, quickly realized that it sounded good that they wanted to grow and they wanted to expand like as business development guy. And, and let me tell you, I was totally green to all of this. I, I had no idea the real estate side, the, right. you know, the investment side of things. Like I just, I was green to it. I went after rooms. Um, so it was a huge learning curve. And I would say about a year in, you know, you, you start dabbling, you start knocking on enough doors, you, you hear no a million times, all it takes is one time, right? Um, to hear yes. And we started to hear a few more yeses and some of those yeses were taking us out of Arizona and the ownership group, they just didn't align. They didn't have the vision. And I'm starting to hear, yes, we would love to work with you. We'd love to work with you. Right. And, you know, I knew we had a strong foundation with my mom and I, we knew our, we know our stuff and. So 20, what, 2019, 2020, COVID hits, obviously. Um, great time to start business, right? No. And, and so we're sitting at home and, you know, I, I will always be thankful for this group. They, none of us got cut. None of us lost uh, a paycheck. You know, we're, wow. we're some of the fortunate ones. Um, they were very good to the staff on property levels as well. There were a few, you know, there were quite a bit of layoffs, unfortunately. Um, 
but they did the best they could. I mean, they were just good people at heart and sitting at home, talking to my wife, um, two kids at home as well, you know, she said, you know, this might be the time. Like, why don't you, you vote, you know, cause again, we're talking back to the Fairmont days. I always sat there and said, you know, what, what would it be like to start our own thing, have our own, call something that is ours. Um, and you know, she's like, why not now you're at home? Like, let's start doing the work. You have the connections you need to start to begin this. And so, yeah, during COVID, we got the wild idea that, you know, everything's shut down. Let's go ahead and start something. And so how does that start to take shape? Because there's a lot of people have that idea. This is what I want to get to. This is why I like, like I was telling you behind stage, like I like meeting the founders is it's one thing to have an idea. I was actually talking about this today, but it's another yeah. to actually start putting some steps into place to start making it happen and to build something of yours. How did you start? Yeah. You know, I, uh, I, again, very fortunate timing. Um, you know, I, again, I, you know, God is great. God is good and really set me up on the right path. So during my time with uh, the other management company, you know, part of business development is me. Uh, so I, I ended up having a really good golf friend that I met through this, an investor. He, um, just great guy. My God, great guy. And you know, when you go out and you have a couple of beers and you talk, oh man, I keep hearing, no, I can't grow. You know, it's frustrating because I want to grow. Uh, and I get it right. I got their point of view. So it's not me, you know, bashing or anything like that. It was just different vision. And I would say a year before this, this gentleman had said to me, you know, what, what would it take? What would it take to start your own? Oh, uh, you know, it's just whatever. No, no way, no way. And, you know, just talk. And so Gary Cove, my wife, once again, she, she pushed me. And so I started talking to this gentleman. I said, do you remember when you said, brought this up? He said, yeah, I've been waiting for you to bring it up again. Um, he said, what kind of capital would you need? So we, again, we pretty humble beginnings, uh, you know, just, we didn't, we, we couldn't have started it on our own. Um, so my, my business partner, he, he said, put it to paper, put pen to paper and let's see what we can do. So that was the time when, okay, we're going to do it. So, and, and this is, this is kind of funny story. So I started, we started dabbling into this in the, in the beginning of 2021. Uh, the pen to paper, the serious conversation started happening, um, went and, you know, I had, I had always assumed that my mom would come with me and she's a big part of our operations with her experience. I mean, she's got 45 plus years. She'll kill me for saying that. Um, she started but, when she was 40, when she was six, right? Or yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, you know, I had always assumed she would come on board. Right. And when I, when I approached her about it and said, you know, here, we raised some capital, we can really get this off the ground. And she said, no, I'm not, I'm not going through the work of setting the prop, setting everything up. You know, there, there's everything, there's the accounting, there's the insurance, you, you know, anything to start a business. There's, it's a lot. It's not what it looks like on Instagram where it just poof, it's there, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which I found out the hard way. So I, I was one that believed in, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. you build it, they'll come. Um, so anyway, so we, we started through that journey. I did start setting it up on the back end. Um, a lot of no's in the beginning, a lot of, you know, and that was the other thing, right? I got two kids at home. I am so thankful, you know, I'll tell anybody that's coming up and coming. If you don't have support from the house, it won't work, especially if you have family. I mean, my wife is just as important in this as it probably more important, gave me the freedom, gave me the belief gave me the confidence to go out and start something. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, she was a driving force, pushed me out and we did it. Um, so got everything rolling, had commitments from two clients. All right. So that's my next question. Go. So you had two clients. They're like, yeah, we'll roll with you if you start up. Well, so again, I go back to a little bit of assumption. I had figured two would, uh, we had, you know, I had developed really strong relationships with them. I, they were, I always call them, they were my guys, right? They were my clients. Uh, so I assumed I was always respectful and cautious and knowing, you know, you know, you do things the right way, right? I had told, I had told the uh, partners of the company we're working for that I'm working towards this. This is what I'm doing. Uh, in the beginning, they were very supportive. So, you know, so I knew kind of, I had balanced it and, you know, there, there's some risk, right? There, in all of this, there is some risk. 
So I will never forget it. In August of 2021, I had officially given my notice, uh, said, you know, I'm breaking off, told my, told my mom, I'm definitely going off and you're coming with me. And she's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so August, 2021 is when we kind of, when I kind of broke off from the other couple. Uh, and so I was, you launched, but, you launched in August, 2021. We launched in August, August, 2021. Uh, I, our first property came on in December of 2021, but our, so Good little story here for you. Um, October of 2021 is our anniversary. And the reason I say it's our anniversary is um, I finally convinced my mother to come aboard and we were greeted at, right out of the gate, right? There's always, always something going on that you never see coming per se. So the old company decided to uh, pursue legal action against us. So August, 2021, and here's the best part of this whole thing. I'm in Cabo with my wife, we're celebrating our anniversary. I'm on a golf course. It's a Thursday. I'll never forget it. And I'm playing the round of my life, Steve. I, and I had just hit off a par three and I was about five feet from the hole. I'm like, this is amazing. Right. And this entourage of golf carts came up to our hole and you know, I'm like, oh my God, what do we do? What did we do last night? Right? No. Um, and I had tested positive for COVID. So I'm getting. They, and at that time they were kicking me out of the resorts. Like you couldn't stay there. So we're trying to figure it out. Well, 10 minutes later, I kid you not, I get a call from um, my mom and she's crying and that she is the strongest woman I know. She had just been served. So all this happened within an hour of everything happening. So we always say that day was the day that motivated us to get through all the crap at the beginning, excuse my language, all, through all the tough times. And really kicked off aligned. And I, and I will tell you, while you're bitter in the beginning, I, I learned quickly, I would say within the first six months, you know what, that's, what's driving us to keep going through the hardships. Yeah. I mean, look, that's a, a great story. And it makes you see like the other company, like, hold on, we just lost two of our best employees to go start something. And like, yeah, I came from a family of attorneys, so I could see that side of probably what's going on. Right. Um, but you get going. So you said December. You have your first client. Who is your first client? Who are you starting with? Yeah, so it was uh, our double tree down in Tucson. We're still with them today. And then nice. is that uh, the one you worked at? Uh, no, it's not the one I worked at. I, uh, it oh, was, okay. One day when I have that one, I'll let you know, Steve, because that'll be full circle. I would love to hear that. I was going to say, that's amazing. Yeah. No, so another double tree by the airport. And then uh, what I like to call kind of our flagship boutique property, the Tuxin in Tucson and that, and, and that one's near and dear to my heart because when I was with the other company, I helped build that, you know, from the whole renovation from an old motel six to what it is today. So yeah, those two came well, on and, uh, yeah, those were our first two clients. And, you know, it, from there, it's just kind of taken off. So let's say I'm someone who wants to start the, my hospitality management company. How, what's the pitch? Why do they need a hospitality management company? Why are they going with you versus doing it themselves or going to a flag? Like, how does that work? You know, it's funny because I've sat in, uh, Plenty of rooms and depending who you're chatting with, let's be honest, owner operators, I'll never deny are probably some of the best operators ever. They're more vested than anyone could ever imagine, right? Because it's theirs. Um, but when you're managing from that perspective, there are a lot of things that you may be a little bit tighter on. There may be, you know, some, some areas that can really help if you weren't so worried about the bottom line, right? So what we bring two things, right? One, ease of mind. You know, how much time can you go and invest and make more when you're not worrying about the day-to-day -day operation, right? So it's really that ease of mind. And then two, it's another set of eyes that have seen and been around many hotels that can bring a lot of fresh ideas, a lot of different perspectives uh, and guidance. And um, so that, that's why you bring us on. Not to mention, you know, you, you start talking about we're up to 27 hotels that gives us a lot of resources that we can use across utilize brand support, you know, those different things that it brings. Um, and yet we're still unique. We've, we're, and we're going to stay firm to it. We're, you know, I like to call us a boutique management company. You know, we're all boots on the ground. I, there's not one of my clients that will tell you that they can call me two in the morning and they still get a hold of me. Um, so, you know, and we'll stay true to that, the true hospitality part. And I think that's my sales background, right? Is we're always there. Um, so, so that's what we drive and that's what we bring. 
I love it. I saw your website. I saw you have a fantastic team there. You brought along a lot of the people you mentioned and you have just some great experience on your team. And so when you're going through, you know, there's all different styles of management groups and they charge different things. How is your, not exacts, but do you charge a flat fee up front if somebody wants to learn? Is it top and bottom line? How do you set up deals to where people are like, that seems to be aligned with us? Yeah. You know, again, a lot of what, and, and, and I hate to go back to this, but you know, we got to make sure we're aligned. Um, and, and no pun intended, you know, any opportunity we get is different. Um, there's a million different ways to skin a cat. And I generally, I, I, I genuinely believe that. Um, so I, it's kind of funny, you know, my CFO always jokes, she's like, no two agreements are the same. You always have something, you know, here or there. Right. Uh, but it's gotta make sense for us. The, the typically it's a, it's a flat fee, uh, or a percentage, but due to our portfolio and some of the uniqueness of the properties, you know, we've got. We've got some hotels that are only 24 units, and then we've got some that are 200 plus units. Yeah. Uh, what that? It's very different, each one, right? They run it is. Different, so, they get a manager. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's getting to know what, what each client needs, right? You know, what are your expectations? What, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can kind of build our fee structure based off of that. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't want to say that it's just, you know, one, one way and that's how we do it. Yeah. Uh, it really, we try to customize everything we do to, to our partners and that's what they, they, and it has to be a partnership. And that's why I said before any deals done, we, we take a lot of time to sit down and really get to know one another. Um, heck I would say most of my clients, you know, I'm, I'm golfing with one tomorrow and, and, and he'll make it a rule. We don't talk hotels. We, we are out here golfing and like, having a good time. Um, so it's, it's relationship driven, but that's our industry. Yeah, it's true. I love that you were doing custom things for everybody right now. And so I love that you're building something here. You've got, you said 27 properties you're managing now. What's your focus? Not, I don't want your five-year plan, but what's like in the next year, you know, the new year's coming. What are you looking to, to do next year? Yeah. You know, it, it's funny you ask that because we, uh, we kind of talked about this, uh, you know, just last week we, we, we had our, you know, our corporate meeting and kind of getting ready for 2025. I, you know, and I'll be very honest, Steve, we, 20 hotels was the 10 year plan when we first started this. So, wow. you know, again, by the grace of God and just being blessed and the work that my team does is just, it, it's phenomenal. And we haven't gone chasing much. It's a lot of word of mouth and, and, you know, so we, we've really started to focus next year is more on, and, and, you know, so cliche, but how do we go from being very good to being the best? And. So we've kind of made some investments and systems for us to help our team. Uh, we're realigning some things that we needed to do. Just, you know, cut with scaling and anybody that says anything differently, I don't believe them. There becomes new challenges, right? It's mm -hmm. how do I make sure that all my properties feel like they're the only property in our portfolio? How do I make sure all my clients feel like a thousand percent of our time and energy is on their property only? And then how are we developing our teams? You know, I want the next front office manager to become, you know, an owner, founder of their own hospitality management company. So how do we ensure that we're still building, you know, I call it the bench strength, but it's not even just bench strength. How do we make sure that we're a company people come and work for and know that in the future, it's going to set them up for bigger, better things. Um, so, you know, so we're really focusing more on how do we start giving back to our teams um, and, and really start that development process, because I think that's still a weak area of the hospitality industry. As great as it is, people go from front office manager to director of sales without the in-between with no yep. mid No, you know, they get thrown into these modes because they have to, right? I mean, it's just, it's the nature of the industry now. Margins are slimmer than they've ever been, et cetera. So you really get a lot of people that in roles that they just weren't ready for. And I go back to, you know, my mom telling me that you're not ready. And I needed to go through what I went through to get to that point. So we just want my big focus next year and beyond is to really, how are we making the future of hospitality stronger and better? I love that. I think you mentioned something like the mentorship has kind of disappeared a little bit. And that's why this podcast is so important to me is to share that because now you share this knowledge and, you know, it's going to go out to thousands of people and hopefully one person will be like, man, Brian said this thing and I'm going to do this. That's the hope, right? And so, you know, you shared a lot of things here. Um, but if you could go back to young Brian, you know, starting out as the houseman and just kind of whisper in his ear, what advice are you given him if he was on your team today? 
take it all in and re- understand that there's always a bigger picture. So I, I always, I had a great mentor that used to tell me while you're painting, you can't see how great the painting's going to be. Take a step away and look at how that picture is developing. Right. And I know that's hard to do, especially when you're young and you want everything right now, but realize where you're at, you're there for a reason. And if you can change your mindset to say, okay, I want to take this, I want to learn from this and I want to implement it into my next step. And if you can just see that, you know, you talk back to that visionary, if you can see that and what this will do for you in the big picture, again, having that vision, having that goal where you want to be, I, I wish I would have, I wish I would have lived in the moment a little bit more and understood that this is going to lead to something that's a bigger picture. So it's almost like putting a puzzle or a painting, like I said earlier. That's great advice. Yeah. So anyone listening, that, rewind that last 30 seconds. I hadn't heard that yet about the painting. I think that's great advice from you, Brian. And look, if you motivated somebody today and they're inspired, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? Where, where is the best place for them? Absolutely. AlignedHM.com. Yeah, you can find my contact information there or Brian.Tubot, AlignedHM.com. Um, and Steve, what you're doing here is fantastic, man. I wish I had a podcast like this that I could go and listen to some of these, the, the people that have made it or, you know, still working towards making it. It's, it's fantastic what you're doing here. I appreciate that, man. I'm very grateful you spent this time with us. It means a lot to me. And look, man, I know in three years from now, you're going to have hundreds of hotels. We're going to have to get you just back on and I'll be watching you and cheering you on. And again, listeners, if you can go check out his website, he's got some really cool properties uh, that they're working on, especially some of the boutique stuff that you've heard me talk about, which I love. And if you found some value in this episode, make sure to forward it to somebody. You never know who you could inspire by sharing this episode. But Brian, I appreciate you joining us here today.